We have a humongous Rolls-Royce V8 that has come out of Lewis's Rolls-Royce. Yeah. So this is out of a 1979 Silver Shadow 2. Classic Lewis, I wanted to buy a new car and particularly one my wife would enjoy. So I went and looked at some cars and everyone was like, my wife was like, oh, I don't want an Audi R8. I can't drive a stu. Oh. <laughs> oh, she's nice. Yeah, so literally, <laughs> as, far as, as far as she knows. She won't watch this, it's okay. We went and looked at Porsche Panameras because that's what every white girl wants, right? <laughs> yes. And that's what Lewis wants. Um, but I put some offers on them and no one would take them. And so my car dealer was like, hey, why don't you 2JZ swap that Rolls Royce I have outside? Kind of being obnoxious as a joke. And I was like, you Lewis might as well. do anything as a joke. Did yeah. you not see the haircut video? <laughs> yeah. So we've gotten lots of requests to cut an engine in half before, but for those that are familiar with the channel, we can't really just throw this engine up on the table and cut it in half because we've got a height restriction. Our nozzle here only gives us about eight inches of clearance above the table, and that's more than eight inches. Why do you have bolt cutters? I'm cutting stuff. <laughs> well, our plan is to disassemble this engine and plan a line that we're going to cut this engine into like a cross section and then reassemble all of the cut pieces so it'll look like a one cut line going down the engine. So our eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed some very advanced mechanic techniques we were using in the disassembly of this. It's just whatever it takes. <laughs> the intake, we had to cut that off because this, I think it's some kind of fuel pressure something or other, um, that has to come off in order for the intake to come off, but it requires a special wrench. I don't know if that's a Rolls-Royce specific wrench. Anyway, it was just a lot easier to cut it off. The head, oh my gosh, was that stuck on there good. You can see that's as far up as we can get that one. And they this one are was easy to get off compared to what we've yeah, done on that one. We've actually given up on that one. We're banding that side. We're just gonna be cutting this side. First part cut in half, this is the intake manifold and it's also got some coolant passages in it, which is that one right there and those little holes there. How would you even know that, Dan? Because the piece we cut off had the uh, thermostat housing in it. Mm. And then that went down into here and then it goes down into the uh, top of the block right there. So there's an intake, there's an intake, and then there's a coolant passage in between the two. This is kind of a unique looking intake because it's got two carburetors, one on each side. This one feeds the left bank. This one feeds the right bank. You can see the, uh, if I can find the knob there, see the butterfly uh, valve in this left carburetor. I do not know what this is, but it's springy and it's got a stick, so. Something in there like shoots that rod up to allow more something to do something. Yes, that's that's what I was thinking. That's the part that's connected to the government so that they control your car without you knowing. I'm surprised how greasy this still is after having cut it with water. Next part we're cutting is the water pump. Why are you left-handed? There it is. 
I thought for sure we would have gotten the impeller at that point, but at least we exposed it. That's the nasty impeller. And then we've just got a couple cool passages. Last up is the head. I'm going to try and cut it right in between this intake and exhaust valve. I don't want these springs coming off and potentially damaging the head, so fingers crossed. And then we'll come across here and then maybe out the center of that. I think I was thorough enough. Hold on, there's a clamp on the back side. I don't want to lose. Oh. We have ignition. Half a head. Yeah, I went right in between the valves. Perfect, which means this side. You grab the head and slide it forward. And then tip it up. Look at that. I got like right to the spark plug. While we were cutting that last part, I welded a rod on here because we don't want to buy the Rolls Royce tool in order to turn the crank. And it actually does it. It does its thing. Look at it go. We thought this motor was seized and I guess it's not. So what you're saying is it could work. Well. Not now. No, it we. We, we pretty some... much destroyed it. <laughs> now we're going to reassemble this with our cut in half pieces, and then we're going to try and hook up the push rods again uh, with the rocker arms there and the head that's cut in half. We're going to try and get it all back together so we can spin it and see a lot of those parts moving and working. I like it. There, and we have an almost working engine again. How this works is you push the gas and that opens. And then the government says you can go, so they open that. Air goes in, and then it makes everything turn. Right? Yep. And then Lewis spins it. And then Lewis spins it, and heat Lewis is what's powering your car. If he does it enough, we'll be able to see these valves. Oh, there, that one moved. Now. Oh, oh, those ones oh. moved. You just keep that up, Lewis. <laughs> Lewis is just over there, just grunting. <laughs> I'm fat, okay? What can I say? And we took the va the valley cover off so you can see the camshaft down there with the little buckets, and those are what pushes the push rods. So spin it, Lewis. Faster. There you can see them moving. And thanks to Lewis for providing us with this engine. This came out of his 1979 Rolls-Royce Silver? Silver uh, Shadow Silver two. Shadow. The Almost. Silverado. Yeah. The Silverado 2. And Lewis actually has a YouTube channel where he is doing an engine swap on that Rolls-Royce. No, no longer using this one, obviously. And you are putting in... Uh, right now we're planning on putting in a 2JZ GTE. So that's the turbo 2JZ from a Toyota Supra. Until somebody changes your mind to like LS or something. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of a 2JZ car and an LS swap C10 here in like the next week or two to see which one we like better. So if you wanna see something like that, Lewis has a channel. We'll have a link down in the description. He works with Patrick, the ring guy. Yep. Not to be confused, confused with a different Patrick. With Patrick from Spongebob. <laughs> Patrick recently started a car channel as well. You have a car channel. Your goal is to have more subscribers than Patrick. Yeah. So and how many does he have? He has 8,690. So Lewis said if he gets more subscribers than that, he will completely submerge himself on a live stream in our tank. So go subscribe to his channel if that is something that, that you want to do. You want to see. Yeah. Yeah. Either way. In the Speedo? <laughs> I'm not well enough endowed to wear a Speedo, which I'm going to be honest. <laughs>